kicking off at 7 here Central Standard Time. And the reason we're starting it on Tuesday, which is the day before da, 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 Earth Day, is because we'll be passing it over to our contact in Vietnam, who is going live with her kids. So she'll be having Earth Day over there. Um, incredible experience. Oh, I saw some video kind of blipping a little bit, so I'll just I'll just repeat. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so hey guys, good morning. This is Justin with New Minds TV. And tonight at 7, we go live with the Cardboard Challenge in celebration of Earth Day. Earth Day is tomorrow on our time, but we're kicking it off here because our contact in Vietnam, poof, will pick up the, uh, the torch, have a great time with her kiddos, and then pass that on to Lebanon, and then back to the U.S. for a full 24-hour cardboard challenge. So the full website goes live tonight at 7. The challenges go live tonight at 7. We'll be kicking off tonight at 7. And you can find all that at newminds.tv forward slash birthday 2020. I'll post that in the, in the comments. Okay, man, I hope that you guys have had a chance to share that with, uh, with friends and with neighbors. And if you're a teacher with your students, really cool opportunity um, to just celebrate a day of creativity and innovation and at the same time celebrate our earth through the use of repurposing and recycling and upcycling. So just an incredible time. Okay, all right. Now, this week we have been talking a lot about uh, creativity. We actually kind of kicked it off last week. And the message was, we think of creativity as being this big, aloof, right? Hard to reach kind of goal, very lofty. Um, and that's not entirely true. It is if we think about creativity as far as like what's known as big C. This is a Kaufman and the ghetto way to think about it, which is this unattainable or I don't want to say unattainable, very difficult to attain level of creativity of like artists and musicians of eminence. And so there are levels to creativity. And so it becomes more accessible if you think of it in terms of, oh my gosh, I'm working with little C and with mini C. This is a way that, um, that I can create. I can learn new things by trying stuff out and I can impact others' lives around me. So little C. Okay, and then yesterday, then you get a chance to check it out. I had a chance to really dive into practical advice for uh, creativity. So, man, okay, all right. I understand that it's not like this high level of prominence that I'm looking for. What can I do to get there? Well, one thing is to think about it not being domain specific, which is a creative artist. It's not the same thing as a creative baker. And so find that area that you're creative in. And then the practical advice was, this is a, this is a disposition, this is a, a personality trait, if you will. This is a, a mode of thinking, is what I prefer. A mode of thinking in order to have creative output is resist closure. <laughs> and I talked about it in yesterday's talk, so I won't talk too much. Just know that the practical advice here is your artwork is never done, right? What you're working on is never truly done. At some point, you have to... the what we shared was you have to abandon that art in order to you know move on to something else so work of art is never truly done is merely abandoned if you will an example that i gave is if you're working like you're looking at some artwork for example i'm using the example from our from our poster um i look at it and i'm like man this, this is great i love the colors the way they pop so i'm being very specific on the feedback there um this is cool hey if you you know if you had to do this over again, what else would you add? Or if you had more time, what would you have added? Uh, what would you change if you could? Those kind of questions may sound harsh, and I've used those with kids in elementary, all the way up to kids in high school. Um, they, the very first blush, it may seem harsh, like, oh, no, he doesn't like it. But really what happens is it helps reinforce the fact that our creative pursuits are never done. So if you had had more time, what would you have done different? Oh, if I had more time, I would have done this and this and this and this and they get used to that mode of thinking. Okay, so I wanna continue that talk of uh, practical advice for, <laughs> call it creativity hacks if you want, right? So what is a disposition? What is a mode of thinking that you can have that allows you or the people you're working with or the students you're working with to have more creative output and, and feel that creative freedom? So once again, being resistant to that closure piece, the work is never done. It's never going to be perfect, right? Always something you could add. And the one I want to talk about today is flexibility. So I don't mean like yoga poses. <laughs> what I do mean, though, is when we talk about creativity, there's different ways to measure it. 
uh, man, one test that's been around for quite a while is called the Torrance Test of Creative Thinking, TTCT. And so, yeah, don't misquote me, but I think it's been around since like 1960 or <laughs> quite a while. And what it measures is it measures uh, a mode of creativity called divergent thinking. And yeah, it, it, uh, it does measure resistance to closure and it measures a few other things. But the point of today's talk, it talks about flexibility in our thinking. And so probably the easiest way to show that and give you a practical hack is to, to grab, to grab some recyclables here. So, okay. With our cardboard challenge coming up, we know that not everybody has access to a lot of cardboard. And so we also know that creativity is not domain specific. And so we are putting three different types of challenges that are very unique. that you could then repurpose, right, or recycle, or even upcycle. So what do I mean by flexibility? Man, if I look at this bottle, right, this little, little juice bottle here, and I'm stuck in the category of this is a juice bottle, then I have not exercised flexible thinking. Oh, look, hey, good morning, Sheila. Sheila, I'm going to give you a little challenge too. Sometimes my, my comments don't come up until later. So if I don't see them until later, I do apologize. But it says, is an example of resistance to closure working on notes for a presentation minutes before going on stage, Justin Vodder? <laughs> hey, bully on you, my friend. Um, yes, it actually is. And it's that idea that uh, even giving a speech, right, is what Sheila is mentioning, is even giving a speech, you if you think it's it's perfect, and you've, you've hammered and you've nailed the speech, then you're, you're probably going to either have that really fixed mindset when you go present it. But if you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to keep working and keep working. Um, and even when you get done, just say, if I had to do that over again, what would I have done differently? So wink, wink at you, Sheila. <laughs> I got that one. Okay. So here is the bottle. Um, and to be flexible, if I say it's only uh, a juice bottle, I'm a little bit stuck. So now, to you viewers that are out there, what else could this juice bottle be? I'll give it a second to kind of think there. Be flexible in your thinking. It's not just a juice bottle. It is what? I'll watch the comments, but again, they take a while to pop up on my end. Is it a pirate spyglass? Oh man, you got to get oil in the car so it becomes a funnel um again i didn't want to give too many away i'll wait for more comments to come in maybe i need to use it to to roll out some dough ah man i don't know maybe there's a bug in the house it's a bug thwarter <laughs> okay i'm being goofy but let me get back to the practical hack here so that's an example of flexible thinking. And a lot of times it's easy to say, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good at that because you know, you're creative. Ah, okay, so now you see all this stuff begin to come full circle. Um, you're good at that stuff because you're creative. Hold on, wait a second. Um, are you creative in flexible thinking, that domain of being flexible? So here's the, here's the hack. It's called forced association. And it comes from, uh, it comes from a synectic model of creativity. And the synectic model of creativity just says this, like if we force two things together and have to associate them, hence the name forced association, then what you're having to do is you're having to draw on different neurological pathways in order to make this kind of connection. So I'll give you an example. And actually, I'm going to do one right now. And I'll, I'll show you a game that you can play even at home. So I'm sitting here with this juice bottle and I say, this is not a juice bottle. This is, right? Okay, there we go. This is a, a pirate, what do I call that? <laughs> I almost called it a stethoscope. It'd be like a pirate doctor. Uh, telescope, telescope, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> a spyglass, if you will. Uh, this is a pirate spyglass. So now, do this with your kids, do this with, with uh, adults, man. This is fun for anybody. This is not a juice bottle. This is a pirate spyglass. And then you pass it, and then the next person says, this is not a pirate spyglass. This is and then have to come up with something as well. It's a bug thwarter, okay? Pass it, this is not a bug thwarter, this is, and again, trying not, not to give too many away in case some comments come in. Oh, I see T's on too, man, Mr. T is, uh, 
I would say is a creative guru, and he I call him that because he's always learning, and he is never done with the learning process, and he's never done with the creative process. Oh, and here, I'll tell you my delay. It just popped up with Spyglass, Sheila. So yes, good call, good call. Okay, so that's a game that you can play, and yes, you can even play it remotely. So if you're a teacher and you've got some students, try that. Um, one of my good friends uh, here in the local area is a teacher and she did that. She actually took pictures of items in her home and sent them. I think she did it on, on Padlet, right? Where the kids can respond and put their, put their answers. And she put them on Padlet and said, this is not a, and it wasn't a juice bottle, but just pretend this is not a juice bottle. This is a, and the kids had to respond back on Padlet. Just kind of neat, just kind of fun. Um, and I, I say that almost with like, like with, Speaking out both sides of my mouth, it is fun, right? But it's also this mode of thinking that allows you to then have more creative endeavors. And so if we are gonna say that certain types of um, characteristics or dispositions allow us to be more creative, practicing that kind of divergent thinking is extremely helpful, especially as you begin to move into the workforce and problem solving. You guys have probably noticed this, like. When we had the the whole sh you know the shelter in initi <laughs> initiative, when the shelter in um, protocol and the legislation came through, and the guidance came through, um, did you notice that some people were much more flexible? They said, "Okay, this is not just a computer, right? That I need to do my work on. This becomes a what conduit." And you begin to see classrooms take on a whole different look. So if you don't believe that flexible thinking is practical, um, it is, and you can exercise it because our brain is this plastic, man. We have plasticity. It can rewire. So a simple game like that is super helpful, super fun. Um, and that is a bit of a forced association. So, for example, you pass the bottle on, and that person is forced to say, like, this is not a spy glass. Let me see if I can force it even more. And this is, again, this comes from Roger Taylor. Uh, Roger Taylor built upon the synectic model by J.J. William Gordon. Uh, fact check me on that one, but uh, synectic, S Y N, so blah, 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 synectic. So, okay, so now here's another example of force association that ties right into our cardboard challenge for tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, one of the challenges, of course, deals with cardboard, um, and then another one of the challenges deals with finding uh, items around your home. And so, I did a little bit of this last week. But I didn't go too far. I just kind of showed some stuff. So I grabbed this out of our interesting bucket of recyclable things. Um, and here's, I got a little, little plastic tub. I got a little paper roll. And I asked my wife and kids, oops, sorry. I said, write down um, parts of a city. So I'll show you, show you what I mean. Then I'll give you an example from the classroom days. Um, so I am looking at this literally for the first time. They had folded in half. So they wrote down... Convention center, skyscraper, and a school. Okay, so forced association works like this. I am forced to use this, and I'm forced to use this. Now I've got to be flexible. So if you find, if you find, for example, you say, "Hey, this is not a, this is not a, you know, a, a bottle, or this is not a toilet paper roll," but you get kind of stuck with that thinking then take it to the next level either for yourself or for your kiddos in class and say force it all right now school how's this going to be a school all right man and again this is live i had no idea what they're going to give me um this is going to be a gaga pit if you haven't seen gaga pits it's where you stand in the middle and you kick each other until you cry um and that's how gaga pit works i think that's the rules <laughs> um this is going to be the gaga pit outside um this right here I think I'm gonna put this on top of a cardboard box for the school. This is gonna be part of the AC unit, right? That comes through. Um, and this, you know what I can do with this? I can put this, I won't need this piece, but I can use this as part of the slide that the kids go down on the playground. So now, man, I've got a playground coming together and there's my Gaga pit, there's my slide, and there's my, my HVAC unit there on top. All right, next one, skyscraper. Oh shoot, okay, you know what? I'm gonna change scale completely. What if this was the base of the skyscraper? I put this on top, like it's coming up. It's kind of neat, right? Got a little leaf kind of look. And this is going to be the base. Ha ha, 
it's like a moat almost. Okay, it's going to fall apart on me. Uh, I'm going to have a little bridge that comes over. And it's going to come in. I'm going to decorate that piece. And you can go to the top of the tower. <laughs> oh, and then a convention center. They didn't make it easy, did they? Now I'm really going to change scale. I'm going to flip this thing upside down. And now a person is going to become just a teeny tiny thing, right? Um, this is going to be part of the tower. Oh, look, now I'm almost cheating on myself. I'm going to flip that upside down. And look, I'm, I'm almost built like Reunion tower here in Dallas. That's going to spin and have some lights on it. That's going to be where you're going to go into the convention area. <clears throat> so bully on you, family. I did it. Um, okay. You're sitting here watching the grown man play with cardboard. I hope you appreciate it. This is, uh, this is why I love doing this kind of stuff. It must be goofy. But I do want to make sure that I give you these practical tips that you can take home and go use for yourself. Once again, I said creativity is, if you think about it as being imminent and hard to reach, then it always will be. Think of it as like, what can you learn from the experience and how can you influence the people around you in a domain that is like, you know, your jam, your thing. And then the practical advice from yesterday was, um, it's, there's no, there's no done right in the creative process. Even though I just said nailed it done, uh, obviously the question becomes if I had more time, what else could I do with this? What else would I add? And now I realize that this, this endeavor is never fully finished. And then flexibility, right? The idea to take something and see it from different categories. This is not a toilet paper roll. This is a slide. This is a tower. And if you still feel stuck in that part, forced association from the synectic model, pick something in advance and then force them together. Let me give you one very real example. Um, I know some of my former students even watch uh, watch this broadcast, so they'll, they'll laugh at this one. I would walk around the classroom, um, and to give you a little bit of context, I'm, a, I'm an English teacher, I'm in middle school, and the kids are reading a book. In fact, in this case, the one I'll share with you right now, they're reading The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, okay? And it has the, I can't remember her name exactly, like the evil witch is like the ice witch or the, oh dear. Someone post up in the comments if they know what I'm talking about. Okay, so in reading the book, I would then walk around with an envelope I called the Flaming Cards of Death. <laughs> you can see my personality. And the kids had to pull out a card, and it would just say, like, apple or peppermint, um, donut, and yeah, I had a lot of food in there. But yeah, so they would pull out these cards, and of course, like, they would look at them. Um, I'm like, okay, cool, all right, sweet. All right, guys, I need you to write an essay it's a comparative, like a compare and contrast essay um, using that format and the structure. Obviously, we had talked about that. And I want you to write it where you take the antagonist, um, in this case, the evil witch. And I want you to do a comparative essay to that and the item you just pulled out of the flaming cards of death pile. So, uh, again, so many cool things came out of that, but you can imagine the look on the kid's face. But by doing a forced association, by making them look at one thing like, this is the evil witch. I wasn't reading the same compare and contrast essay 50 times. And I do remember um, uh, one thing that I would tell them that actually comes out of the synectic model is don't just think about the physical characteristics. Uh, and an excellent example of that is, yeah, you could talk like a girl had the peppermint and the white witch. Uh, was it white witch? Snow witch? <laughs> Sorry, guys. So she had, but I do know she had peppermint. And so... If you just stayed with the physical characteristics, if you just said like, oh, you know, peppermints are white, and so is the Snow Witch because she wears white, right? Boring. Try to go a little bit deeper. Try to go into the metaphorical, and that's where the force association begins to kind of breathe. How does it feel to be a peppermint? How does it feel to compare those two things together? Again, it sounds like I'm getting out there like on a different plane. I'm not. This is sixth graders that were doing this. And her essay came back and very clearly it talked about she, she was icy and had an icy personality the same way that a peppermint fills you full of like icy. Anyway, so I can go all day, but I shouldn't. <laughs> okay, let me wrap this up. Um, I hope this has been helpful for you. Again, the practical advice of the last couple of days has been resist closure, right? You're never done with a creative endeavor. You just have to walk away from it. So resist closure, and you do that by opening like open-ended questions and continuing to say, well, what else would I add? What else could I do? What else would be there if I had more time? And then today's practical tip is flexibility. 
to really force yourself to think this is not a blank. This is a blank. And again, if you need to, if you need to fit something in there ahead of time, right? So that you're forced to think that way, this is a synectic force association. So you have a great chance to test this out. It's starting tonight at seven o'clock is the cardboard challenge. And man, part of those challenges ask you to do that. It asks you to, to see something from a different way and be flexible. Um, once again, kicking off tonight at seven o'clock and passing over to our, our contact in Vietnam um, because there'll be an actual April 22nd Earth Day. And it's the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. What a super cool way to celebrate with a 24 hour around the globe cardboard challenge. I, again, I will post a link to our, our site, which will go live at 7 p.m. It's there right now. It's just, there's no resources until 7 p.m. And it's newminds.tv forward slash Earth Day 2020. All right. Well, man, thank you for sticking with me this long and watching me sit around and, and uh, play with cardboard. And at the very least, try that today. Try that today with uh, the kids that you teach or the kids in your home or the people you live with or someone that you're in contact with. Just be goofy, man. Take a picture and say, this is not a cranberry juice bottle. This is a, and force them to uh, use the synectic model for creativity because it has practical and long reaching implications. All right, friends. For Justin at New Minds TV, thank you for your for your your time, and thank you for likes and the shares and the comments. You guys are incredible. Um, oh yes, Sheila has posted up a whole video about not a box. <laughs> That's one of the best books. Um, and Doug has said, and a huge pivot occurs when you are able to change the size of the shape of the object. White witch, white witch. I love you guys. Yes, it was. It's like Snow Witch. I'm like it's not Elsa. I know that. Man, thanks, guys. And Doug, I do want to unpack yours. I know I've signed off a couple times. Sorry. I'm resisting closure like that. Um, so he had mentioned that. Oh, I got more. Oh, look at all these comments. Mentioned that a huge pivot occurs when you can change size. That's a very practical piece of advice. Um, which all he's saying is this. And stop me if I'm wrong, Doug. But for example, when I looked at this. If I'm stuck with thinking like it has to be relative to like the size of toilet paper, um, then all I'm really going to see is, well, okay, so this could be, you know, a lift in weights. Okay. Um, I could put it on my head and a multi pointy hat. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> They're coming to me. What do you do? But if you can change the size like I did and say, well, what if I was this small, what would this suddenly be? Oh, suddenly it's a grain silo. Suddenly it's part of a union tower. What if I was this big? Okay, all right, suddenly it's a slide. Um, what if it was not made out of cardboard? What if it was made out of foam? Oh, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, what if it was made out of metal and constructed that way? Maybe it's the Bose, Bose Collider, right? I always say that Bose Hedron Collider. Um, but that's what, that's what Doug's saying is a, a great, a great aspect to your creativity is can you change the size? Can you change, can you rethink this? Ah, let's go smaller. And then I promise I'll sign off. What if you could shrink this so small, right? What would it become then? To me, suddenly it becomes um, that you can put it inside your bloodstream and now you can actually um, do those, those bypasses, right? And the way they do bypasses by using like little tubes and tunnels. So changing size is super helpful to even at the microscopic level. All right, on that, I'll get my spyglass here for you and say, hey, <laughs> Oh, are you there, mateys? Have an amazing day. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.